So we did the traditional approach to the mean variance frontier. Now I'd like to do the state space approach to the mean variance frontier, or Hansen and Richards approach, because they're the ones who wrote the paper that showed how this works. So now we're going to lie in our state space. Pay off in state one, pay off in state two. We saw before how there's, there's a hyperplanes of constant prices, the excess returns here, the returns here, price two there, and a discount factor, or our friend X star, is in that space uh, orthogonal to these hyperplanes. That's the space we're going to live in to think about the mean variance frontier. Now, let's look at that a little more closely. I drew a three-dimensional version here. Uh, so there's the origin. Now we have a space here of excess returns. It's a three-dimensional hyperplane. And, uh, and the space of returns is a plane in this three-dimensional space a little bit above. Uh, let's locate the mean variance frontier in this state space notation. So we, we got to introduce a few new friends. Our first new friend is, is R star. Uh, so what is R star? We, we know that there's an X star. We spent, we spent a week thinking about there exists an X star in X and so on and so forth. So from X star, let us simply define a return proportional to the payoff X star. Divide X star by its price, and that gives us a return R star. Graphically, we take X star. X star is a payoff, but it doesn't have price 1. So we create a payoff of price 1, R star, that's proportional to X star. A natural place to start, because X star was the important uh, uh, payoff in, in our previous view of asset pricing. Um, <clears throat> If you'd like an example of R star, well, the example of X star was, was price expected payoff, uh, uh, expected payoff, payoff, prime payoff. So R star you can form by a set of returns in the same way. That's the X star and then divide by the price of X star. So it shouldn't be mysterious. Uh, it's based on means and second moments, just like everything else we've been looking at. The second ingredient is a little more novel, R E star, the projection of one on the space of excess returns. This takes a little more to digest, but it's a beautiful quantity once you see it. So uh, geometrically, what are we doing? Uh, here is X star. Here is 1, uh, a payoff that is 1 in all states of nature. And if you extend that, it becomes the risk-free rate, a payoff RF in all states of nature. RF is typically a little bigger than 1. So that's where 1 belongs, and that's where RF belongs. RE star is simply the projection of 1 onto the space of excess returns, as claimed. Now, why would anybody want to do that? Well, we're looking for a mean variance frontier. So uh, we're looking for some way of changing means. And RE star carries the information about means in the same way that R star and X star carry information about prices. It's the same idea, uh, just applied to means rather than prices. So for example, uh, the price of x is e of x star x. In the same way, the mean of an excess return is e of r e star times r e. It generates means in the same way that x star generates prices. Now, how does it do that, you ask? How, what does that have to do with that property? Well, watch. The price of any x is the expected discounted payoff. And we can always project the uh, discount factor on the payoff space and get the same pricing, because the residual is uncorrelated with x. And the projector of a discount factor on the payoff space is x star. So that's how the price of x is e of x star x. x star is a payoff that generates prices. Well, let's generate means in the same way. An expected mean re excess return is the expected value of 1 times the excess return. That's the same as the expected value of projection of 1 onto the payoff space, uh, onto the expected return space times the expected return. And that, of course, is the definition of RE star. This may seem a little weird, a regression with 1 on the left and excess returns on the right, but that's exactly what we want. We want the set of excess returns, the, the excess return that is closest to 1. So we run a regression with 1 on the left and the excess returns on the right, and it generates means in the same way that X star generates prices. To further demystify it, how could we construct it? Well, the same way we constructed X star. Here's an example of an X star that works. The same construction, expected uh, excess return prime second moment matrix inverse times excess return, that is an excess return 
It's a portfolio of excess returns, and that has the required properties. It just takes two lines of algebra to check it. So here's our ingredients. We have R star, and we have R E star. R star generates prices. R E star generates means in the same way. Uh, the, the hyperplanes orthogonal to R E star have the same mean in the same way that the hyperplanes orthogonal to X star have the same prices. So that's the point of R E star. It generates changes in means among the excess returns. Now we're ready to do our, our mean variance frontier with essentially no algebra whatsoever. Two propositions which you can see in the picture. First, an orthogonal decomposition. Any return can be expressed as R star plus some amount of R E star plus a residual. So R star plus will go in the direction R E star and then we'll go in another orthogonal direction to the residual. And each of these have some very special properties. First, they are all orthogonal to each other. R star and R E star are at right angles, meaning their second moment's zero, uh, meaning the price of R E star is zero. It's, a, uh, it's an excess return. And the residual, eta is orthogonal to both R star and R E star. That means that the mean of this residual is zero because it's orthogonal to R E star, and the price of the residual is zero. It's an excess return with mean zero. So you can see that geometrically. Uh, how would you prove it algebraically? Just define eta as the residual and show that you, uh, all these things are orthogonal and they have the required properties. Once you see the picture, it's just a few lines of algebra to grind out the required properties. Next, the mean variance frontier. Once we have the orthogonal decomposition, we can show that the mean variance frontier is just R star plus different amounts of this R E star, a two fund theorem just as we had a two fund theorem before. Start by R star and then go different amounts of R E star. This here is in fact the mean variance frontier of returns. Why is that true? Well, uh, take any decomposition here, take any return, find its mean. What's the mean? Mean of R star, mean of R E star, the mean of eta is zero. Eta is a zero mean, zero price uh, object. What's the variance? Well, the variance is variance of this plus variance of that plus variance of this plus all the cross terms. No, the cross terms all went to zero. These are orthogonal to each other. That's what makes this so pretty. Well, if you want to uh, minimize the, the variance holding constant the mean, just get rid of that guy there. Set the eta to zero. We've just proved our theorem. The mean variance frontier is R star plus W R E star. A very nice two fund theorem based on two very different returns, uh, suggestively similar to what we've seen before. You can see mean primes and second moment matrices and stuff like that. It gives you the same answer in an n dimensional space, but a very different geometric representation and a different and I think uh, and very interesting set of uh, basis assets, the R star and the R E star, that'll be useful in many other circumstances to span the mean variance frontier. And we have a depiction of the mean variance frontier in our state space rather than just in the space of means and variances. Thank you.